welcome back to Joe Etheridge Stadium after an all-star pregame show. How about that? Well, we got uh, the late, great John O'Connor, Sean Ellison, and Coach Townsell, and Coach Snor. Special thanks to them for carving out some time. It sounds like Coach Townsell has a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> Sound like he was ornery as ever and ready to come. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, Coach Norris had to go work. He's still selling insurance policies up there. They were part of this thing. It's, uh, it looks nothing like it did 44 years ago. A sparse crowd on the Viking side. Again, the 44th meeting of these two teams. The biggest win ever for Fort Walton Beach was the second game. 1972, 27 to nothing with that ringer, Ronnie Enclave. The biggest win for the Indians just two years ago, or last year, excuse me, 45 to three. Clocked the Vikings over there at, uh, at Steve Riggs. The total, most total number of points scored, 69 points scored in 2012. The Indians losing 30-31. Tommy Johnson, this is his rookie appearance here. Mike Owens was 8-7 against the Indians. And the last few has lost the last two. Joey Rankin, 3-4. and four. Jimmy Ray was 2-1. and one. Eddie Davenport, 4-8. and eight. And Chester Norris, 4-3. and three. We talked about the Choctaw side earlier. It's not about the past. It's about today. And the Fort Walton Beach put up a gutsy performance last week against Bay. Yeah, they played their best game of the season by far. It was a loss, 41-40. But a talented Bay High Tornado team out of Panama City. And uh, surprised a lot of people. They sure did. As coaches talked about, we haven't put a complete game together. I look for this to be, with all the emotion, the rivalry, the game that it is, I think it's going to be a close game. Hard fought. We were so excited. I didn't even see who won the toss. I, I did not either. <laughs> a lot of uh, shaking it up. Coach Thomas, he said, we ain't getting any production. We're changing the whole offensive line around. Tonight it's going to be Mark Pennington at center, Kevin Klein at left guard, Jason Godfrey moving from defense to offense at right guard, Jimmy Grace at left tackle, DeAndre Hooks at right tackle, and Colby Dorsey coming back at tight end for the Indians. Good to have Colby back and taking the big guy Godfrey, the sophomore, who's coming into his own on the defensive side of the ball, moving him to the offense. It'll be interesting to see, hey, what better time to do it than the ninth game of the season, getting ready for uh, hopefully a playoff run. Zach Nash moving from tight end over to defensive end, taking Trey Broadwater's place. He's out of the game again. And let's mix it up at linebacker. The Sam linebacker is going to be Kalen Lovett. Jacob Pulliam up from JV at the Will linebacker. And Mike Turner from fullback over to the Mike linebacker. Good. I like to see Mike Turner get back in, into the into some action. Started out strong for the Indians early. Uh, curtailed his playing time, but a talented kid, 6'2", 220, needs some big production out of him in the linebacker spot. Yeah, the Vikings 1-7 on the year. They're 0-2 in their district. They have given up an average of 45 points a game and scored only 20. And that was with a 40-point performance last week. They're ranked 341st in the state by Max Preps, 6,420th nationally by Max Preps. Again, they've lost to Pace, Arnold, Milton, Navarre, Niceville, and Crestview. Their lone win of 35-34 may have been an accident against Rutherford, but they'll take it. <laughs> the Indians, 4-4, four 1-1 four, one one in the district. The losses coming by one point, two point, three points. And last week, just at a seven point loss. Ranked 74th in the state, 822nd nationally. Brady Ooten, the sophomore quarterback for the Vikings. I think Choctaw has some big things with the schedule they play. They've had a tough schedule, tough games. Uh, tonight, got to get Ooten to uh, under, keep him under wraps. 49 completions, 120 attempts, 674 yards through the year, four touchdowns, six interceptions. Maybe Choctaw can get some interceptions. Leading rusher, a talented Antonio Marshall. Big kid, six, 69 attempts, 490 yards, six touchdowns. Average of 7.1 a touch. Receiving tonight, Rashard Parker. Indians have to stop him, 16 receptions, 312 yards, three touchdowns. The Vikings will kick it off to start the game. Moving from our right, to, excuse me, our left to our right. Doing the honors for the Vikings, number 10, LaDonda La Coward. Two touchbacks, I believe, on the year for Coward. Vikings in their road, white pants, white jerseys, red helmets with a white face mask. Indians in all black. Howard approaches it. The 45th meeting is on. Toe meets Leather. A low line drive kick taken at the five yard line. Richie Grant up the middle, up to the 30. Got some more room up across the 35 to the 39 yard line. Inspired return. He ran it up in there hard, did not stop. Bowled over a Viking, almost broke another tackle. Brings it all the way out 
to the 39-yard line. This is the week of the optional Mohawks for the Vikings. They get that haircut, get ready to take on the crosstown rivals. Remember, we said 44 years ago, they've never played each other in anything. Childers is your up back as we come out in the eye. Toss sweep right side. Marquise Kane, Marquise Kane bulls his way up to the 43-yard line on a sweep to the right. Line up in the eye, trying to get the big offensive line with their adjustments in the starting rotation. Muscled it in there, Marquise Kane, 5'8", 175 pounds, uh, junior, five tough yards. Second down, six to go for the Vikings. Soon for the Indians from the Indy in their own 44-yard line. Then we're going to toss it, run it back this way. Kane to the left side. Marquise bulls his way. Looks like he has a first down at midfield. Two tough runs is the old USC toss sweep. Student body right, student body left. 11 yards and a first down. Just underway here at the Joe if you're tuning in. Indians at midfield with two carries. A nice return by Richie Grant. And we're setting it down right at midfield. Left hash mark. High formation. Jake Fairley. Receiver to either side. Childers the up back. And there the little guy gets up there for about five and quick play. Quickly. Got to control my emotions. I'm starting to sound like that Niceville announcer. First snap. Yeah, I tell you. Hey. He's, on the, he's on it tonight. Niceville with a big game. District implications, playoff implications going on at Niceville. Crestview visiting and also Gus Malzahn visiting. There's been a Gus sighting. Uh-oh. He. I'd be worried about who I'm playing tomorrow. Got Ole Miss on the docket. He better be worried. Play action. Jake Fairley looking left. Swings it out. Caught by Colby Dorsey. The best hands on the team. Down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, great job by a tough athlete. Guy I've come to admire Colby Dorsey this year and his toughness. Uh, Jake laid him out a little bit. Lofted it up there. He made a great two-handed catch. It hit immediately, but holds on to the football. Tight end special right there. Minute and a half gone. Opening quarter. Indians at the Viking 30 out of the eye. Marquise Kane off behind the right guard, about a yard, maybe two yards. Shortest gain of the night so far for this new look Indian offensive line. Tackled to, by the Vikings, Brandon Partridge. He's a senior defensive end, 6'4", 230 pounds. He slow played it and uh, made a, a good sure tackle on Marquise. Gain of two, second down, eight to go from the Viking 28. No score here early on. Two minutes gone in the opening quarter. Now we'll go out of the spread. Quick pass out in the flat, complete. Down to the 19-yard line. Richie Grant on the reception. Vidal Merrill during senior night was not dressed. So the Indians certainly not short on receivers. Richie Grant will have to pick it up a little bit. Indians averaging well over five yards per play here on this first drive. Indians going old school too, huddling it up. Now we'll break it, go into the spread. Kane, play action, looking, looking out to the right. It's tipped by the Vikings and incomplete. Looking for Dorsey out in the right flat. The Viking got a paw up there and knocked it down. Good job with the deflection. Send the speed package in. Chris Pickett checks in. Isaac Smith checks out. Indians are huddling up. Haven't seen that all yeah, year. Yeah, Indians have been going fast since probably mid-season two years ago. <laughs> now we'll split twins to either side. We'll run jet motion left and hand it left. And back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Maybe a yard down to the 19-yard line on the jet sweep. Coach likes to run that jet sweep into the short side, into the boundary. Ball is on the hash. Brings up the first third and long situation tonight. Third and eight. Vikings would like to hold here. Indians will have it at the Viking 20-yard line, just inside the 20. This will be the ninth play of the drive. Indians stay in the spread look. Chris Pickett wide right, got single coverage out there. We'll put motion back left, fake the jet sweep. Jake Fairley looking, looking over the middle, going for Pickett, incomplete. Do it in a double coverage, had to have somebody else open. Good play action pass with the jet motion. So field goal unit in, Mendoza will try this one. Richie Grant will hold it. They'll put the tee right at the 26-yard line. So it's going to be a 36-yard attempt from the left hash. Vikings have nine on the line. 
Snap is good. Placement's good. Kick is up. It's long enough. It's good. Vikings down three to nothing early on the Mendoza field goal. Indians draw first blood back in 30 seconds. You're listening to the Big Green Radio Network. I forgot all about that, Scotty. No worries. All good. Okay. I'd forgotten all about it. Good. Look at the ketchup package for the Taco Bell package. If you're considering pick the liner, retainer, or traditional braces, call Neil Orthodontic. Only an orthodontic specialist in training teeth and has two to three years of education in nice dental school. To so make the decision to smile better, you can call Neil Orthodontic at 244-3880. That's 244-3880. Or visit them on the web. All right, here's 10. All right. By DrNeal.com. Become a member of the Beautiful Smiles Club. Go Big Green. Indians draw first blood off the foot of Mendoza. Make it three to nothing. The scoring drive update brought to you by Emerald Coast Funeral Home. Including the field goal, the Indians run 10 plays, cover 40 yards, started at their, their 39, make it down to the Vikings 19. Settle for a 26-yard field goal right down the middle. Mendoza, 3-0. Indians take three minutes off the game clock. Mendoza tees it up near the right hash mark. High kick going to be short of the goal line. Taken at the 2. The 10. 15 and down hard at the 21-yard line. And there's some dancing going on on the returns team. Juan Ware makes the... Special teams tackle down there cover number 24, 5'8", 175 pound junior linebacker. So the Vikings, again, averaging 20 points a game. Giving up 45, that's a problem. Indians averaging 30 a game, giving up 25. So the Vikings will spread the field. Brady Eaton at quarterback. They'll run trip strike right out of the shoot. Single receiver to the left. Pass complete across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Newton had a career day last week against Bay. Four touchdown passes. Pass completed to Evan Mitchell, junior wide receiver. Ran a curl route. Eight yards on the completion. Second down, two to go. Early on, first quarter, Indians lead it three to nothing. Vikings in there traveling white. Red hel helmets, red numerals. Pistol formation. Handed off left side, first down, a couple to spare. Number 22, Chase Cleveland on the carry. So the Vikings, on their first possession, pick up a first down and probably a little confidence. Yeah, you gotta have some confidence after scoring 40 against Bay. Coming out and playing inspired Coach football. Tommy Johnson, probably coaching him up this week. Out of the spread, a little eye formation out of the shotgun. They'll hand it again to Cleveland right up the middle. He's still fighting. He has a couple yards across the 40 to the 41. Kind of going smash mouth like the Indians opened up with. He iso play. Fullback led him up in there with a tough block, and he followed him. Three to nothing early on here. Indians on top. Been good Samaritans all night. Had to supply the Viking radio crew with a roster of theirs and a roster of ours. You're a heck That's of a, good. Yeah, heck I'm of a guy. Yeah. Got to put a dummy in the booth here. Told him no way. <laughs> twins left, twins right out of the spreads. Second down. Seven to go and flags fly. I'm not sure if we're going to have a Delay a game penalty, and no, it's a false start. Somebody got Play in clock a, at 25. Somebody got in a three-point stance and flinched. Once that hand goes down when you're on the offensive line, you cannot move it. Somebody did. Big 76, Joshua Del Grego, 6'4", 315-pound senior. Big kid. So that'll back the Vikings up and make it second down. 12 to go from their own 37-yard line. Oop. Patrick Cooper in the backfield with him. Young team, the Vikings. Cooper gets a couple. Back to the original line of scrimmage. That's going to be about it. Vikings hit hard. 
not by injuries, not by graduation, but by hard by transfers the last few years. Be a different, uh, different team if you put Deontay Sheffield, Romeo, Romeo Finley, Jake Fairley, Jake Fairley, and, yeah, and a few others. Brandon Thompson last year. Their offensive line, they got 315, 280, 250, 240. They're big. All right, they're not going to spread it there. They're going to go into the spread, but they've got double wing formation out of the spread. Lost it out in the flat, complete, and stopped for a gain of about two yards. Miles, Miles Betts comes up from his corner spot, makes a great tackle. Ran a shoot route, slot back, kind of crossing things up. That's was right there, made a perfect form tackle, stopped him in his tracks, 47. So the Vikings have used a myriad of punters this year. They're averaging 34.7. They punted the ball 35 times already this year. Corey Bonner will do the honors right now. A good snap. Pressure coming by the Indians. Don't get there. They'll block one for the high kick. kick taken at the 25-yard line. How about that 40? Gone. Midfield. I think this one's going to go to the house. One man to beat. And he does it. Touchdown, Indians. Richie Grant takes that one the distance. He, he does what a, any good punt returner is going to do. You have to get north and south immediately. He went north, broke a tackle, got through the first wave of the kick team, kick coverage team. They overran it, and he was on the sidelines with one guy to beat the punter. That was Corey Bonner. He did so easily. had a lead blocker out in front. Nine to nothing quickly. The Indians wisely, just like you see in college football, wisely did not block somebody in the back. Did not push anybody in the back. Just get away. So Mendoza will try to make this 10 to nothing early on here in the first quarter. Snap is good, placement's good, kick is up, and it is good. With five minutes to go in the opening quarter, the Indians up 10 to nothing on the Vikings. We'll keep it right here, provide that scoring drive update. Presented by John Dowd, attorney at law. I'll say that was a 65 yard punt return. I'm guessing on where he fielded it. Maybe the 30, 25 30. Like, like we said just now, uh, he went north and south immediately, got leverage on the kick coverage team, broke one tackle. By that time, he had passed the wall of defenders for the Vikings. Had a lead blocker to block the punter. He was an athletic kid. Corey Bonner is a 6'2", 200 pounds, strong safety wide receiver type. Uh, but Richie Grant's speed up the sidelines was no match, 10 nothing. Special night again tonight because we're streaming this live and archiving it on EmeraldCoachTV.com, ECITV.com. RJ Murdoch and his team of volunteers and producers from right here at Choctahatchee High School, WBGI, W Big Green Indian Network. They're always <laughs> a part of it, and they're doing a fantastic job. Nothing comes free. The Indians got some nice T-shirts this week, nice game day T-shirts provi provided to the Indians, courtesy of several, the Dowd Law Firm, Mike Webster's Law Firm, Brian and Kim Pennington, and Bruno Trilogy donated the cabbage to take care of that and also the t-shirt spots are screen print design so for all your screen screen, screen printing and t-shirt needs look to screen print designs that's an awesome game day t-shirt they did for the indians second kickoff of the night for mendoza jose this time he'll put it right in the middle of the field last time it was on the right hash Moving from our right to our left, five minutes to go here in the opening quarter, 10-0, and this one will go out of bounds at the two-yard line. So the Vikings will get good field position at the 35. Early score from Niceville that we'll all be interested in. Seven to nothing early on, Niceville. Yeah, they... They clicked on all cylinders last week against Pine Forest. Hung 42 on the... Twice beaten now, Pine Forest Eagles. Choctaw was the only other team to beat them, and that was a, a dog fight when we went over there. Fort Walton, I mean, uh, Niceville was clicking. So the ball will be spotted on the right hash because that's where it went out of bounds. No time off the clock. Good job done by the clock operator. First and 10 Vikings. And one thing you don't see all around the country is the spirit that that Vikings <laughs> that student section has. I was in the pep rally last week as a alum of Fort Walton Beach High School. 
I was worn out just watching them the whole time. <laughs> Every cheer was coordinated. They all had their purpose, and they did it. Twins to either side now for the Vikings. First and ten. Two-step drop, throws it across the middle. Incomplete, almost intercepted, but he was hit hard on a, a five-yard in route. Hunter Merrill over there. John, he got his helmet pushed off of his head, but defensively, Cameron Tab, Tom, a junior linebacker, broke the pass up. He threw it into coverage. Two Indians right there with uh, Corey Bonner was the intended receiver. Corey Bonner pulling the Viking stats early in the week. Didn't even show up in the receiving stats. <laughs> so the Vikings, the leading receivers were Shot Parker for 312 yards, averaging 20 yards a catch. A lot of those probably from last week. Trips left now for the Vikings, second down. And play clock. Plays clock. Let's see. Delay a game. 4.25 to play, opening quarter. Vikings penalized five yards. The Indians lead it 10 nothing. And that's one of those things that happens when teams are you know, down on their luck, so to speak. You can't, have, you can't be behind the chains. Now they're second and 15. They're scrapping for every little victory they get each play. Now they're second and 15. Smith formation, Jackson Cooper alongside Brady Uten in the backfield. Wins to either side. Uten looking right, throwing right, complete. And to the 42-yard line, Rashad Parker, the leading receiver we just mentioned. Ran a slant route. Joey White was playing off of him a little bit, gave him the inside release. Kind of an easy pitch and catch. Joey White makes the tackle immediately. Lee Hale says two. He's correct. It's on the 38. They got it or the uh, 43. They got to get to the 45. Third down, three. Long two to go. Vikings will come up to the line with nine on the play clock. They got to go hurry up. They go right, right up the middle, and they've got a first down across the 45 up to the 47 yard line. I think back and you. Think of the late, great John O'Connor with that interview with Goosebumps listening to it. What would he say about this crowd? Embarrassing? Uh, he, Rough one, Walton Choctaw game? He'd be disappointed. He'd say, sign of the times, maybe uh, just a different, different time. Yeah. Not even close to full on the Fort Walton Beach side. This wouldn't be the crowd for an opening game back in uh, the day whenever I was playing. Uten hands it up the middle. Stood straight up before midfield was Chase Cleveland. Back before there was internet, 300 cable channels, and everybody with a cell phone. Vikings get some new players. We talked about our new line. Chase Cleveland hadn't touched the ball much this year. <laughs> no, not on their <laughs> stat <No>. sheet. <laughs> and making throws to Corey Bonner, so they're changing it up. Let's see if Tommy Johnson has that hood on over there. He's normally got the hood. He's got a hoodie on. It looks like he's got the long white windshirt. Coach probably would not look that way. He says, I want a timeout. So he'll keep it right here. Last home game of the season for the Indians. You know, the Indians, if we get in the playoffs and play another runner-up team, we actually would host. Last year we were the even numbers, and this year the home team, home team is the odd district. We were in District 2 last year. This year it's District 3. So we would need St. Augustine to beat Niceville. Yeah. That's the way it looks right now. These will be hosting the runner-up of this district, District 2, 3, 6A. And if Crestview were to lose tonight and the Indians hold on, we'd be making a road trip in two weeks over to uh, over Nassau County. All the way across the I-10. The old high school, the home of the Tim Tebow back in the day. Third, uh, excuse me, second down. Nine to go for the Vikings out of the timeout. Three receivers split wide left, two right, empty backfield. Boot should have ran it, but he didn't. He threw it complete. We almost beheaded him, but he's got a first down. Richie Grant on the tackle. He and uh, Eeks. He's made a lot of plays, Trent Eeks. Richie Grant delivered the blow, not before first down. Good pass there by Brady Newton. Antonio Marshall with the reception. Chains have moved. It's at the Indian 41. Two minutes, 36 seconds to play. Opening quarter. Indians lead it 10 to nothing. 
Vikings putting together a nice little drive here. Started at their own 35 when we kicked it out of bounds. They'll spread three to the left, two to the right. Empty backfield. The soft slant route picked off. I don't know who he was with. Yeah. I don't know, but we got it. A picket face mask. And I think he was brought down by the face mask. I don't see a flag. Chris Pickett did his magic one more time with another interception. It's a turnover. Guess what? 25 more bucks, bucks in the book. Defensive turnover by the law firm of Keith, Hankers, and Gordon. The little things that hurt you when you're struggling and you're one and seven, you give up a special teams touchdown and you give up an interception in the first quarter. High formation, shoulders the up back, tail back as Marquise came. Marquise goes right up the middle. Indians keeping it simple. Gets about two, maybe three yards up near the 40 yard line. Indians second possession of the game. First possession, they ran nine plays. They can do possession number two. The game, number 45. For 35 years, was played right here, wasn't it? That's it. Maybe even a, little, a few more. High formation. Play action. Jake rolling to his left, throws it to Childers in the flat. Zach Childers got some running room. Down the left side, Childers at the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 16-yard line. I don't know how you get that open with the fullback in the flat. But he turned it upfield and was gone. Childers is our version of Wes Welker playing fullback. He's just... 5'5", 160 pounds, low center of gravity, quick feet, good hands. He's athletic, but he's not the biggest in stature. They're actually going to spot it at the 13. So Indians have it first and 10 at the 13, out of the eye. Let's give it to Kane right side. Marquise bangs his way across the 10 down to the 9-yard line with the uh, shoulders leading the way. Running it right at Brandon Partridge, the big defensive end. Had him blocked, and then he picked up five tough yards, Marquise Kane. Second down, Cole Cruz checks in the game at wide receiver. Split, he'll split, Cruz will split out to the left. Tight end is Dorsey on the right. Second down out of the eye. And boot, naked bootleg. Touchdown. How about that? Colby Dorsey slips out of tight. Tight end. We fake the call. Sweep to the left. Put leg to the right. I thought for a minute Fairley was going to run it. I did too. Great play action pass. There were seven Vikings going to tackle the ball carrier. Left the Indian receiver wide open. Once again, Coach Thomas pulls a play out that we haven't seen yet this year. 16 to nothing early on. 45 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Hunter Merrill, high snap brought down by Richie Grant. Kick is up and it is good. Let's pause for the cause. One minute, Indians up, 17 nothing. You're listening to Big Green Radio Network. Nice drive by the Indians. Let's hear about it, courtesy of our friends at the law firm of Wesley McGrail and Wesley. Four plays, 63 yards, a minute and 30 off the game clock. Big play of the drive. The pass to the big big fullback, Childers, ran it up the sidelines, 40 yards. Dustin Hoffman played him in a movie, didn't he, little big man? 17 <laughs> nothing with 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Now Mendoza keeps him guessing. He's going to put it on the right hash now. Kick it from over there. I guess he hooked that one a little too much. You know, hit it, try to tee it on the right side of the marker, hit it down the right side of the fairway. This one does draw, but it's going to draw right into the end zone. And Fort Walton dangerously watches it bounce like one or two bounces in. Yeah, the young guys, they came out hard. You can see them a little bit frustrated right now. You got the body language of heads slumping. The all Coach Johnson can do to keep them fighting for 48 minutes. He's talking to him over by their bench. If you're not lucky enough to be watching this on Emerald Coast TV. Great, great feed. We got a monitor in here. I feel like Joe Buck and Troy Aikman in here. Everything but a spotter. 
We need to get Chris Klein back here. CK. Slant route, incomplete. Oh, my goodness. Chris Pickett with a late hit. And he's going to get flagged for it. Yeah. Right, rightly so. Yes. That's... There's nowhere near the... Uh, Should have tried to pick it off. Could have hit, picked it off. But it, ball went by the receiver. He gave him a shoulder. Wasn't targeting. Didn't hit him in the head. But it was unnecessary roughness. The perfect definition. Yeah, it happened so fast. I thought it was the old clothesline back in the day, like the Oakland Raiders used to do. He hit him with his right shoulder in the uh, receiver's right shoulder, so it was a legal hit just late, or, you know, unnecessary. Yeah, the, the ball wasn't catchable, and it wasn't caught, and the ball went by, and that's when Pickett decided to greet him. Said, I'm here. That'll, they won't come over the middle much anymore. Without thinking All right, empty that. backfield for the Vikings. Five wide receivers. They'll try it again and pay for it again. A high pass and through the hands of Will Meyer. Little guy. Second and 10 for the Vikings. 34.2 seconds left to go in this opening quarter. The good guys on top, 17-0. Generally what happens, they teams get down. They're down 17 points and they go away from the run game. You want to control the clock, run some time off. Now they're going to pass it every down, stopping the clock, extending the game. They come up to the line. They're still not set, and there's five on the clock. Three, two, one. Snap and it. the refs, nope, did the right thing and threw the flag. I'll drive a coach crazy. Get in the huddle, get out of the huddle, especially if you got to run the motion. Vikings trying to put a drive together just to build a little confidence. Now the mountain gets higher. They still don't have a play 16 seconds, 15 seconds. They're not out of the huddle yet. Frustrating to say the word. Now they're up at the line and there's seven on the play clock. And I'll put Marshall in motion. Run him down the left side. And down, it goes in the backfield. Ian Terrio. He's been back after his injury, getting after it. Chad Marshall with the quarterback sack donation. That's 50 more bucks in the coffers. Say hey to Ian Terrio's dad over in Korea, but I think he's here. He doesn't go back over for another, another few days. So we'll say hey to somebody else, Andrew Dovin. <laughs> Our man. He's in the stands with his headset tonight. All right. He comes out for one game a year. This one. And a good one to be at for Mr. Dovin. It's 17 to nothing. Tribe will be back in one minute. You're listening to the Big Ring Radio Network and watching on EveryoneCoachTV.com. Brady Uten looking deep. Going to throw it up for grabs, and Joey White's got it at midfield. Joey White just ran right in front of Corey Bonner for the pick. That's two picks on the night for the Indians. In a row. All right. Larry Keith open up the vault. That's another $25 going to the coffers of the touchdown club, courtesy of the Keith Anchors of Gordon Long. I need to get in <coughs> that eye formation in. Run the ball. Indian the again. This is this is not an Indian team that we have seen up until tonight huddle every play. It's been methodical. Single back this time. Now we'll put jet motion. Cole Cruz in motion. And we're gonna try the oh. double reverse pass and we can't even hold on. Easy peasy. Shoulders is just gonna have to run with it. And a block in the back, excuse me, that's Isaac Smith. The Indians tried to set up the reverse pass and get a home run and 
Didn't get the uh, handoff. Isaac Smith didn't field it cleanly. Then he was going to pick it up, and he kicked it. We have an injured Viking, Joey Pearson, down on the field. We'll sort that out, and I think we had a block in the back of them with all that. Yeah, this one will be, we'll be way back. Bruges checking back in, number 16. So they'll have a... Hope, uh, hope everything's okay with Pearson. A big penalty from that flag, probably about the 30. It'll be back inside the uh, 15. We started at midfield. <laughs> Block in the back on the Indians. So it'll be first and forever. <laughs> Ball's at the 21. We have to go to the opposite 40. <laughs> well, the uh, optimist says we've got three downs. <laughs> first and 40. <laughs> no, 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 you don't have to get them all back on one down. <laughs> and then the next week, the Indians on the road to close the... Close the season out at the Mosley Dolphins. Tommy Oliver. Tommy right. Oliver. Hopefully that field's in good shape. Yeah. Historically it is. Granddaddy of them all around here. All right. Out of the spread. Play action. Barely rolling to his left. Rolling back to his right. Knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Marquis King. Three of them back. Actually, they're locked. Yeah. Two yards. Second down, mile and a half from the 29, excuse me, the 24 yard. We need to get to the other 40. A punt might do well. We'll see what Coach Thomas has dialed up. We tried the reverse pass and that's what got us here. We couldn't do that. And now we've got time being called by the Indians. We'll keep it right here because it might be a quick one. Again, we've mentioned Crestby was at Niceville tonight. Other games around the area, Rocky Bayou is visiting Acola Christian. Baker at Northview. The undefeated Walton Braves at East Gadsden. South Walton is at Bozeman. Freeport's got their hands full. They're going off to Fort St. Joe. And Weewa Hitchka. Fighting Gators are at Holmes County. Other games of interest in District 16A. Pine Forest and Tate tonight. That'll be a good one. They're both undefeated in, their, in District 16A. District 26A, Navarre pretty much has it wrapped up unless Gulf Breeze pulls an upset of all upsets. If they do, it's going to be a shootout over there, it, look, it appears. And across the state, as we said earlier, it looks like that uh, St. Augustine and, uh, has the runner-up positions settled. Inglewood is at Nice. Inglewood's one and two, and Nice three and zero oh in the districts. Nice will have that first seed, even with a loss, because they have the tiebreaker against St. Augustine. Out of the spread, play action. Jake Fairley looking, going deep, and throws it way over the heads of everybody. Going looking for Pickett, and Rashard Parker touched it, and man, he looks like he just won the lottery. He threw it as far as he could throw it. And Parker touched it, and then he did a dance. He was happy. Hey, I broke that up. That's a pass breakup. My helmet sticker. Did that one in the stats. Third down. Now you got to get it all back in one, but I think Coach Thomas would be happy with a, a nice play here. And they'll fairly do the honors with a punt. Twins to either side. Kane is in the backfield. And Marquise will get it. Marquise. Oh, my, he's got a first down. Marquise has the first down and five yards to spare. Just on a regular sweep to the right. A draw play. Yeah. Uh, he, he did it as a quick draw. He broke it to the right, got to the sideline, and there was nobody there, which is. Now they're spotting it. They're moving the chains back. They're going to say Marquise stepped out at the. 43 yard line so they're putting the chains back in place it's going to be fourth down and three to go go for it i didn't see him step out but uh, i wasn't on the field either <laughs> yeah second quarter action right now indians on top 17 to nothing apologies for that lack of 
scoring information. Should be more prudent. Fourth down, three to go. Need to get just to the 40-yard line, and the Indians are going to go for it. Why not? Hey, why not? Spread formation, twins to either side. Pickett's going to be in the slot to the right. Indians barely looking to throw. Slant route complete. First down. Richie Grant. Why not go to Old Faithful? Gus, you're owed up at Niceville taking a look at their guy. How about a look at this one? Yeah. Richie's uh, a... That, that look. He's had a great year. He battled a little knee bruise in the middle of the season, but he's been a two-way player, playing safety and corner for the Indians, playing receiver. He will come out, and Marquise Kane will come out. Let's see who that is, a tailback. Looks like Kalen Lovett. Looks like Lovett. And Lovett will get the, cam the call and love it. How about his first carry of the year? Good for six yards. Coach is tuning him up for the playoffs. He's it didn't have an open week, but played Tate, looked at film and said, hey, we're not getting it done with these guys in these positions, and it's never too late to make changes. <laughs> yeah. Ninth game so of the we'll, season. We'll move our starting linebacker to tailback. Kalen, 6'1", 190-pounder. Looks like a tailback. Second down. Four to go. Love it with another carry. Love it. Almost gets to the stick for a first down. I think he's going to be about a yard shot. 17-0 Indians. 14-0 Niceville right now. So first, first down, the Indians run a reverse at, from midfield. Going to do a little re double reverse pass, drop it, kick it, have a penalty, and end up with the first and 40 on third and 37, how pick many, it up. How many total yards have been covered on this play? <laughs> we started there, went back, got a few more. I said, yeah, we had to get 40 yards for a first down, picked it up. Timeout for a measurement if you're listening on WPSM. Again, streaming live and archived on ECITV.com, EmeraldCoastTV.com. Not only first down Indians, not only Chuck the Indians broadcast on there, RJ Murdoch covers it all, man. Got the Chamber of Commerce First Friday coffees they've got, they've got the Bowlegs parades, you name it, he's covering it. Yeah. With the Celebrity Golf Tournament next week. Normally it falls during this week and he can't do this game. No, it was last week, excuse me, because he had the he wasn't here for tape. And he'll be doing the North RJ, Florida. You didn't, you didn't miss much for that one. <coughs> North West Florida Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders. Defending national champs. All right, out of the eye. First and 10, Indians here, second quarter, leading 17-0. Play action, fairly squeezes out the flat to Kane. Marquise Kane, 15-10. I'm sorry, down at the 11-yard line, and we're going to have block in the back by Dorsey. Colby Dorsey put his head down right when that flag came in, and he said, I did it. And Lee Hales calls that block in the back. Second one of the, the drive. The drive. The game, and this is the drive. Back it up to the 29-yard line. For the drive here in the second quarter, you want to hang with us at halftime. Great. The interview train continues. The class of 1976 that played in this game in 75, 40 years ago, talking about the importance of this game and their youth is handoff up the middle. Not much there. Marquise came to the up back position on that one. So why not experiment, right? Put put Kalen at tailback, Kane at the up back. Now Pickett checks in. We're going to have a whole defense over here in a minute. <laughs> Got a lot of people dressed out tonight, too. Cole Cruz, Lots wide left. Senior night tonight. Second down, 11. Quick hitter to Pickett. Pickett, 20. Puts his helmet down. Dives forward to the 15. Maybe the 14-yard line. Did not respect the tackling skills of Alex Kung. He had, did not shoot, fake anything, just ran right into him and over it. Roderick Willis out there as well. Hear that name, you wonder about Robert Willis with any relation. 
Cruz wide left out there with Dorsey and Richie Grant. So we got trips left. And that's going to stop him right in the gap. More penalties on the Indians. 17 0 here, second quarter. 8 28 mark of the second quarter. Indians having a fine time of it in this 45th edition of the game. Have two interceptions on the defensive side of the ball. Touchdown drive, a punt return for a touchdown, and a field goal. Lots of action. Trips left. Pickett's on single receiver to the right. Jet motion, Richie Grant, he'll get it. Richie cuts it back inside. Richie Grant, like 10, 5, down at the 3, ball comes loose. They're going to say he was down at the 2. 11th play of the drive. Running through them. And I'm not any disrespect, but like water. I mean, they're, there's gaping holes, and they're just running. Yeah, it was third down and a pitching wedge, and we ran a, just a basic sweep to the right for a first down. So first and goal, Indians from the two, right hash mark. If you're listening on the radio, we're heading toward Racetrack Road. Childers is back in at the up back. Kalen Lovett's at tailback. Jake Fairley, delay to love it, and that was read very nicely by the Vikings. Love it was hit at the five, did all he could to get forward to the four. Did have penetration in there. Again, I've called his name several times. The big guy, Brandon Partridge, 6'4", 230-pound defensive end. Caden Phillips was also in on that tackle. He's a deep defensive tackle, 6'2", 220. Two big guys combined. New look Indians huddling it up and controlling the clock. Second down, Jake Fairley against his old teammates. Toss sweep, right side, Marquise Kane, 3 2 1. Touchdown, Indians. It took a while, but the signal came up. The side judge on the right side, that's 23 to nothing. Indians on top. How do, you, how do they officially stat that? The drive started at the 50. We had penalties that brought it back to the 20. It's up to you, my friend. I'm going to call it an 80-yard drive. 12 plays. And the Vikings flinch a bit. Half the distance to the goal. Indians may just refuse this. They will, they'll refuse it. Kick it from where we got it. Well, Mendoza moves the tee about a half a foot toward the right. Snap is down, kick it up and it is good. 24 nothing. good guys, back in one minute. You're listening to the Big Green Radio Network. P.S. Gift, longtime supporters of Oak Ridge County Athletics, TV. is proud to be a Choctaw Indians fan and sponsor at 29 Walter Martin Road. In yeah, don't tell me they're going to they're gonna do the clock. Running clock? Yeah, running uh, clock. That's second half if we're up 35. I know, that's what, yeah. I, just, I just can't that imagine. Was, no, no. That was right. nice last year to get it over with because we brought it on the field. Not two years ago. Yeah, no. Yes, it's bad before one. One of the best gift shops and the finest gift shops on the Emerald Coast. The place to go for a great football game, talented. All right, here's that. All right. Amazing band and dedicated bands to Efford Stadium where the spirit of Talk Talk comes alive. Go Big Green. You make us proud. Well, the Indians hang another one. This touchdown drive brought to you by Scooter Brothers. We fixed up Scooter Brothers all year on Racetrack Road. 12 plays, 80 yards, lots of penalties, four minutes off the game clock. It's 24 nothing. 7.02 left in the second quarter. Mendoza drives this one. It's going to be a low liner, and it's going to bounce into the end zone. I think the, the two key plays of that drive were the first down double reverse pass that we kicked uh, blocking the back on the drive started at the 50 went back to the 21 
And then the third and 37 where we run a draw play and pick up the first down plus some. Actually, he didn't pick up the first down. Created a fourth down and three play that we converted. So Vikings first and 10 from their own 20. Go under center. Tight action, going to run toss sweep out of the double wing. And not much there. They actually lose yardage back of the 19. He's driven back. And penalty markers are down. Look like they went into the double slot with the wide outs on the line of scrimmage next to the tackles. With the two-step motion, run the sweep, have a penalty on the play, declining. Now they're going to back them up. Again, not your typical chalked off Fort Walton game. If you want to sit on the visitor side, there's plenty of seats. Must be a great audience, okay? Not so much on the home side. Remember back in the day, they would put end zone bleachers in right up on the back line of the end zones. Be cold weather. Yeah. Place would be five deep on the track. Also be, plus uh, the bleachers in the end zones. And for a while, they put chain link fences to stop the crowd from going from one side to the other. The side you entered was the side you stayed on. Same formation, double wing, actually double slot. Motion left, toss sweep, not fake the toss sweep. Brady Ooten and down, he goes at the four yard line. And here comes a late penalty flag, very late. Gabe Estes was having a little ring around the Rosies. Simon McDonald. About to back him up again. Another, yeah, another sack by the Indians. That's on Chad Martin. Well, that's not a quarterback sack. Yeah, it was, too. Yeah. He's trying to pass it. Personal foul on the Vikings. Half the distance of the goal will back them up. So it's timeout for hydration. This water break brought to you by Cameron D. Simpson, attorney at law. Back to the one yard line again, halfway through the quarter here. Indians lead it 24 to nothing. Again, next week we head over to Mosley. Pre-game at 6.40, kickoff at 7 o'clock from Tommy Oliver Stadium in Panama City. So the Vikings trot back on, and they've got first and 28 to go, 29 to go. Spread it out, going to shotgun. From the one, Brady Uten. They got trips left, twins right. They'll swing it to the right, and we're trying to get a safety. Do we have it? We do. Just when things go bad, the worst. We'll all the Indians catch one up the Vikings on a slip screen. So the Indians attack two more points on the board. It's 26 to nothing. Back in one minute, you're listening to Big Green Radio Network. Back at Joe Etheridge Stadium, the Indians, two more points, the first safety of the season for the Indians. First one, yeah. So the Vikings will now get the what they call the free kick. It used to be a no-brainer. Teams would punt it from here because of the, I guess you could get good coverage on the punt, but now teams are elected to put it down on tee and drive it. The kickers kick it further than they used to. The punters out kicking their coverage, I guess. I mean, in the NFL. Well, they are going to punt it. Yeah. Not going to put it on. Corey Bonner will punt it for the Vikings. Indians lead it 26 to nothing. Short kick and penalty flag. That's why, Tom, yeah. if you go off sides, is that what it was? Or they didn't? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't see any laundry, at least around the 20. 
false start. <laughs> they didn't blow it in. I'm not sure. Kicked it before the ready. I was going to say, are they going to back him up to the one again? I was going to say, I was going to re <clears throat> recap the series of events that led to the safety. A couple of penalties that backed him up inside the three, and then they tried to run a rocket screen, catch the ball in the end zone. We tackle him immediately. Here we go. 6.02 to play in the second quarter. Indians lead 26 to nothing. High spiral taken at the 40. Who is that? 45. Is that Kane across midfield? And we got some running room. That's Pickett. Pickett, one man to beat. He's got some more friends. That's Richie Grant. Richie Grant down at the 12 yard line. He was determined to catch that one. He backed up, fielded the punt, and off he went. Party's on at Joe Etheridge if you're wearing green. Maybe a quick second half. Indians from the 12-yard line after the punt, and all things considered, that was a pretty good punt by Corey Bonner. High hang time, just talents and blocking. Richie Grant, speedy, gets to the outside. There he goes. Indians, high formation. Childers, you up back, and he'll get it. Look at the little man fight. He goes down to the five-yard line. Childers only a soft. Second down, three to go for the Indians. Need to get to about just past the two for a first down. People at the ticket gate demanding their money back. <laughs> Dorsey's in the slot to the right. Second down out of the eye. Childers up the middle. Little man, touchdown, Childers. 32 to nothing. Five yard run by Zach Childers. Point after attempt by Mendoza. Make it 33 to nothing. Snaps. It's been really good. Hunter Merrill snapping it back with touch and accuracy tonight. Once again, I want to thank the uh, law firm of John Dowd, Mike Webster, attorney at law, Brian and Kim Penn, with Bruno Trilogy for providing the, uh, the special game day, game week shirts for the team and coaching staff. We Diet, should get some of those. Diane and Pulliam put that together. I, I think maybe they handed out all they had. <laughs> they said uh, she's got a, a, a note here to me. It looks like they are available for purchase at the Spirit Shack. Fort Walton Beach versus Shockdaw. T-shirt sponsors provided for players and coaches. Screen print designs did it. Law, law firms of Dowd, Webster, and Brian and Kim Pennington. Made the donation to make it happen. And this touchdown brought to you by Fantastic Sam's. Was there today? I need to go. I got a place out in Destin. Janice, boy, she can cut the lettuce. <laughs> Two plays, 12 yards, 40 seconds. Childers with both carries. 12 yards on the drive with the touchdown. 33 to nothing. Five minutes left in the second quarter. Yeah, we literally have a half a quarter to go here in the first half. kick will be into the end zone. I remember being here for the game number two when the Vikings beat the Indians 27 to nothing on the back of Ronnie Enclade. And remember thinking, boy, what a blowout. 27 to nothing. Now, I mean, you see these games that Baylor and TCU and these guys put up, and they're putting up 60. Yeah. It's just no, it's like nothing to it. Back then, a 20, 21, 27, 28 point win was I something that, you know, was huge. I grew up like those guys were talking that'll be talking that we'll listen to at halftime about the, the daily news coverage of the game and it was a week long <coughs> recapping up. the series you know it meant a lot Uten hands it inside nothing doing there back to the line of scrimmage 14 to 3 Crestview's on the board now I, I remember my sophomore year 1988 
Uh, almost a slot back and a safety. And this place, it was the first time that the, they were going to have play for the trophy for the, the, not the first time, but the first yeah, time in a the while. Hudson Marina Trophy. Yeah, yep. where there was two, two consecutive victories by the Indians, and then we were playing for the third one. I'll finish in a second. Ooh, out in the flat, complete. And nothing doing down there. But it was the biggest crowd. It was hot and humid. But the crowd, the whole place was filled up on both sides. The end zones filled up. The track was deep. And this was during warm-ups. This is pregame warm-ups. That was the overtime game. But we did have an overtime. In the end regulation tied up. Talking about exciting. Battling. Two teams getting after each other. It was something to behold. Third and ten for the Vikings. From their own 20. as they break the huddle with eight on the play clock. Brady Uten, the sophomore quarterback. Seen it all this year, it throws this one deep. And will the Indians get another pick? We do. Damn. Is that Betts? Good for Betts. Miles Betts, the rise up winner for last week. Another turnover. I think Larry Keefe and the law firm, they're going to have to go cash in a CD or something. To... Here's a recap, and this is, we held them to five plays on their first possession. They punt it, we return it for a touchdown. Next possession, interception, interception, safety, interception. Mm. The so, Indians are on fire. Yeah, Indians come up first and ten, single back. Jake Fairley, again, against his old own team complete. Isaac Smith. Now. Chains will move. This half can't get over fast enough for the Vikings. 3.07 to play. And they have to kick off to start the second half. And it's like there's not a, they're playing with eight guys. I mean, he was wide open. I think the question mark of the night for the Indians will be when Jake Fairley goes to the bench, who will we see at backup? If it'll be Richie or if it'll be someone else. High formation. High, just too high and too hard for Dorsey to hold on to. Try to quick slot back screen out there. Great play action pass. Colby couldn't handle it. It was above his head. He's got his neck brace on tonight. 259. He's got that hashtag on the back, G-A-T-A. -A. Gotta love it. From the 44-yard line, second and 10 Indians. From the Viking 44, lead 33 to nothing. Out of the eye. Dancing outside, that's Shoulders. No, excuse me. That's Kane, Kane, five, four, three, two, one, touchdown. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of emotion. I, it's like a scrimmage. I do too. You hate to see this. I thought last year when we went over there, that was the stands were empty and the student section was still going like last year, but uh, they're still. It, it may be worse this year. Credit to them. They're over there jumping and having a good time, and you gotta <coughs> appreciate that. Because Boy, they are spirited. 40, 39 to nothing. Point after attempt right now by Mendoza. And Mendoza has his high game of the year so far with is that four extra points in a field goal, five extra points in a field goal. I don't know. It's tough to uh, watch. Three plays, yeah. 60 yards, a touchdown, 40 to nothing. Literally took 30 seconds off the game clock. And uh, this will qualify as a 24-minute second half. We'll have a Viking band play at halftime. The Indians will play. And uh, like you say, it'll be interesting to see if... Yeah, if beautiful pregame ceremonies with the dual bands, bands, combined bands playing the, the national anthem. Great, great job in the, the pregame. Something else, uh, Chester Norris, and, and that'll bring new meaning to, for me anyways, because I don't have the, the history of the Vikings, but to hear... Cliff Lewis talk and yeah. him talk about the influence that Chester Norris was in his in his life and uh, 
his decision to go to Fort Walton Beach. After yeah, let's set that up because uh, halftime we brought the guys in that played in this game 40 years ago for the Indians was Freddie McLaughlin join us and Charles Rigdon. Both of those, Charles went on to play at Troy. Freddie went on to play at Southern Miss. And for the Vikings, probably one of the great, better athletes of that area, Tim Taylor, who's now in the ministry out in Seattle. He, he joined us along with Danny Hare out of the Hare family and then also Cliff Lewis, who played at Southern Miss and then ultimately with the Green Bay Packers. And like you said, Cliff getting emotional in that interview. We'll have that at halftime. They talk about what this game meant, what this city meant, and what some of the people in this city meant to them. I think my dad was a first-year coach at Pryor, just out of college, and uh, coached Cliff. And <clears throat> my dad went to Southern Miss, and I was a little kid, pre-second grade, I think, and went to watch Cliff play at Southern Miss. And Freddie obviously went into the locker room afterwards, got chin straps and elbow pads from those guys. Reverse pass or try to flea flicker. And they're going to put one up for grabs. It's way out of bounds. Antonio Marshall was the intended receiver covered up by Joey White. The Vikings tried a little Indian trickeration there with a wide receiver tossed back to the quarterback. <clears throat> but to continue on with that story, uh, Cliff was a great linebacker at, at Southern Miss and watched him play at Alabama and beat Alabama. Reggie Collier was the quarterback. Then went to watch Cliff play as a Green Bay Packer uh, play the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome. So I indirectly got to watch yeah. his whole career college also, and pro. Also on that Viking team was Dane McDaniel, who ended up being the starting quarterback at, at Southern, Southern Miss. Miss. Yeah. Second and ten for the Vikings as we wind this first half down. Booting out in the flat. Uh, a couple yards, no, a couple yard loss out there to Corey Bonner. <laughs> So it's going to bring up third down for the Vikings. Clock is running, and we'll probably say that the whole second half. Leads 40 to nothing right now, Indians. Qualifies as the Florida mercy rule. So the, Vi the Indians' previous largest margin of victory in this series. 42? Yeah, 42 points last year. Hopefully it'll just be 40 this year unless... It was 45 to 3, so we'll see. I, we should see everybody the second half for Coach Thomas and the Tribe. Penalty flags down as Ooten's airing this one out. Incomplete. It was wide open. No one, no one on him, and they still was in, fell incomplete. I think they blew that one dead. See the signal. Where's the white hat? Still waiting, they're talking over White Hat's gonna converse with the side judge and the field judge and hopefully we'll have a second. Chuck Franzelia looks like out on the field one of them. It's, they're gonna wave it off. I think they, they started counting players. I think they thought the Vikings had too many players on the field. Uh, get the third down over again. That's that is Chuck Franzelli on the far side. Chuck still roughing? Yeah. He's probably he's, talking he's to Tommy the, Johnson he's right the now. the dean of the uh, Miracle Strip Officials Association. Been doing it a long time, but uh, he, he said it. It took him a long time to be able to call a Choctaw game. That was their rules. He's a Choctaw graduate and had a daughter come through the ranks. And they want to make sure. Ooten. Incomplete into the Viking bench. Putin's a sophomore. 5'11", 190-pounder. Getting to air it out tonight. Minute and a half to play in the opening half. Indians on top. 40 to nothing. And again, halftime will go right into it. It's about a 20-minute halftime. Should be just about right. It is, uh, it is really, really special when you hear the old Vikings and the old Indians talk about what this game and what this area means to them. Low driving kick will run away from it. Crosses midfield and out of bounds at the, I'll be downed at the 42-yard line. 21 to 3, Niceville. So Niceville's doing their part. That means the Indians are going to be guaranteed a spot in the playoffs unless Crestview pulls a miracle. A miracle in Eagle Stadium. Yeah, they'll need some 
meet some big plays. <laughs> no, for up there. One more week for Crestview, and then it's basketball season. Corey yes. Bonner, their not Corey Bonner, uh, Rusty Moore, their quarterback, their best basketball player. He's a, he's a sporty athlete. I wish. I'm kind of glad he wasn't playing when we played him. <laughs> So twins to either side for the Indians probably just run the clock out. No, nope, we're going to throw it out in the flat to Pickett. Chris Pickett gets out of bounds at the 43-yard line. That's going to be good for another Indian first down. And Coach Thomas thinking about getting one more score for his starters, and then uh, that'd be the night. If the JV's dressed, they need to play the whole second half. Mike. They've, they've moved up who they're moving up, I've, I've been told. So who's out there is out there. Twins to either side. First and ten Indians. We're approaching a minute to play. Underneath screen. Dorsey with a spin move. And down he goes. I believe that was Colby Dorsey. Looks like it. Yep. No. Kane. Richie Grant. Richie Grant. I got it wrong three times. Second down. Jake spikes it. Comes right back to him. Tried to run the screen, uh, rocket screen. Richie had to make several people miss, made a couple miss. 26 seconds to play in the half, Indians on top. You heard it right, 40 to nothing. I think the coach is trying to use this as some preparation in, the, in a future game where they have to, you want to practice your two-minute offense as much as you can, so that's what they're doing right now. Student bodies, both of them, just going at it, giving each other the business. 70 yards apart. Vikings coming on a blitz. Up. And caught. It appears caught at the 17-yard line. Bonner makes a tackle right as he catches it. What do we got back here? Roughing the passer. Personal foul, roughing the passer for the Vikings against the Vikings. I didn't see it. He, he had to pass off with plenty of time, so the kid had to take three steps before he did. That's Callahan Phillips with the late hit. One of those frustration penalties. Man with two last names. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'd be calling him Phillips <laughs> Callahan yeah, yeah, yeah. if he played over here before Curtis Elliott. Into the <laughs> What was his name? <laughs> Elliott <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> I called it wrong every time. Yeah, so <laughs> time out, Indians. You get for having attention deficit <laughs> dyslexia. It's going to be at the 13 yard line. A lot of fun here. We don't want any eavesdropping on our commercial break, so we'll keep it right here. Yeah. yeah. We'll Emerald Coast careful. TV again, streaming it live and archiving it. That's ECITV.com. ECITV.com in this broadcast. The Choctaw Football being brought to you by the Choctahatchee Touchdown Club and is intended solely. For the enjoyment of our listening audience, and in this case, our viewing audience, any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Choctaw Hatchie Touchdown Club is prohibited. Do you think anybody pays any attention to that anymore? I've seen no. more YouTube clips and edited stuff, and yeah, it's prohibited. They're going to show up at your door and pop the cuffs Get on you. you. Yeah. If you try to tape it and sell it, Yeah. good luck. There we go. They dubbed some other voices on it over us. That would help them. Yeah. The Indians have it first and goal at the eight-yard line. 16.9 seconds to play here in the opening half, leading it 40 to nothing. Fairly still in the quarterback. Kane's your running back. Isaac Smith in motion left. Will load it up left side. Fairly throws it complete. Pick it down at the two-yard line. Bonner grabs it by his head and throws it down. Indians in, hurry up. Legal tackle. Seven seconds, six seconds. A timeout now by Coach Thomas. Again, next week at Mosley. Actually, at Tommy Ha Oliver. We're at Rutherford, but we're playing Mosley. Bay High School. Free game at 640. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. Again, this is the 45th meeting between these two schools. The Indians lead the series 23 to 21. For the longest time, people referred to this as the Army-Navy game. Big rivalry meant nothing. But then later on, as the redistricting and all occurred, then playoff implications came into play. 
And uh, that's where we're at right now. The Indians in this all Okaloosa County district with Crestview, Knightsville, and the Vikings. Remember, 6.6 .6 seconds as the Indians are ready to go and the Vikings are now lining up. Being a little, little guy, going to Edwins, right? In the heart of Viking country. Yeah. Fairly incomplete. Intended for Cole Cruz. They ran a good. So we're going to come in and boot this one in, and Mendoza's going to use that contraption Lee Hale has on his knee to ice his leg down at halftime. This will be shorter than an extra point, but more difficult as it comes from the right hash, which isn't. Uh, is it made for right-footed right-footed sidewinder kickers? Snaps good, placement's good, kicks up, and uh, it's good. 43 to nothing as clock as time expires here at Joe Etheridge. It's good if you're a Viking fan, Indian fan. Not so much if you're an, a Viking. Hang with us at halftime, but back in 30 seconds.
we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation can long endure. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Nothing here in Joe Etheridge if you're just tuning in. Indians, all Indians. Yeah, they had a, a big first half. Uh, Fort Walton Beach contributed to that with a myriad of mistakes and turnovers. They, after their first possession, punted to Choctaw and Choctaw returned it for a touchdown. And then the next five uh, possessions went interception, interception, safety, interception, punt. And the Indians have not been shut out. They went, scored a field goal on their opening drive. Again, returned a punt for a touchdown, then had a touchdown after four plays, a touchdown after 12 plays, a touchdown after two plays, a touchdown after three plays, and a field goal after running four plays. I had it wrong in the first half. The Indians will kick to start the second half. The Indians received it, start the game. Mendoza will tee it near that right hash and will kick it toward Racetrack Road. Hats off to the chef. Yeah. He did a great job this year at the Chateau. Yeah, this is the uh, the, the final game of the never-ending buffet. We had a lot of guests tonight come in. We even had guests just to use the microwave, taking it the four-yard line. I believe that's Bonner. And down he goes at the 23-yard line. Bonner's a big kid. He's a senior, 6'2", 200-pounder. Plays defense and offense, and punts and returns, kicks, and does it all for the Vikings. Saw a tweet today from Coach John Lavin down at the state golf tournament. The Vikings were in second place with a few teams still out in the field for the opening day, it appeared. So hats off to the, the Viking Linksters of which I was one of the first four classes of that stuff. We had hickory shafts and gutta percha balls and, you know. Yeah. yeah. The old gutter. All right, new quarterback in for the Vikings. Chase Geisel. And we move and they move. I think they're going to penalize us. Yeah, we move we Into the neutral zone. Chase Geisel. He played, took some snaps this year. He's... Thrown it 12 times, completed six of them for 64 yards. Has not had a touchdown. They're not going to back the Vikings up. That's who's taking over for quarterback. Let the senior come out. 
It's senior night. Let him go. Number 56 for the Vikings, the starting center. Cameron Gano. He doesn't have the Viking Viking wing on his uh, on his helmet. Pass out in the flat, complete. Uh, best play of the night for the Vikings. Knocked out of bounds, though. Stepped out of bounds at the 40. But he went up the sidelines with the hurry. Indians come out a little lackadaisical second half. Up 43 to nothing. And as predicted, it's a running clock. We've got two minutes of this second half already gone. Twenty-eight to three, Niceville over Crestview. So the Eagles doing their part. Geisel complete. Vikings not going to quit fighting. And Cameron Gano without the wings reminds me of George Bailey of It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> Got to earn his wings, I guess, before they'll put him on his helmet. Probably scraped him off. Antonio Marshall, the senior running back, giving great effort. You know that's what Coach Johnson was teaching. Hey, we're not going to quit. We're not going to lay down. We're going to fight second half. They're down 43 to nothing. Chase Geisel out of the spread. He's going to look left, throw it left. One hops it to Corey Bonner, incomplete. The Indians, for the most part, a lot of that those starters still in there on defense. Third down now for the Vikings. Third down and four to go from their 46. Need to get to midfield. Student section still going strong. Geisel, and he's going to go down in the backfield. We slap it down as he tries to get rid of it. He was in the grass. Good four job. down Vikings. Good job by Geisel to get that one off before he was sacked. Right now, Coach Tommy Johnson doesn't look like any special teams are coming in, or are they? Yes, they are. Maybe no, maybe not. Geisel's still in there. Looking at his wristband. Vikings are going for it. Fourth down, four to go from their own 46. Really and truly, it's not a bad call. Yeah. Manageable fourth and short. Half the quarter is almost gone. Seven minutes to play. Geisel goes up to the line, taps somebody, barks some orders, and out of the spread. Looks left, throws back to his right. Is it complete? It appears to be. Is it enough? It was complete to Antonio Marshall. Ball's thrown low and away. He makes the catch. Tommy Johnson is right over it. Over there. Not, it looks gonna like it's going to be short. I almost hope it's good. Yeah, get, get something for these guys. First down, uh, Indians, turnover on downs. So it bites them again. Let's see if we can call some numbers for the Indians who might be going out there. What about a quarterback? 20. Yep, they haven't called his name yet. Juwan Taylor. The left-hander. Got the Richie Grant package, but let's don't do that. Because we don't want any injuries. This will be the first time he's taken a snap in varsity action. 645 in play of this running clock. Indians on top, 43 to nothing. The largest ever margin of victory was the Indians last year, 42 to nothing. Toss sweep left side, right side, Mark. Marquise Kane. First down. And then some. So just like that, we have a water break here in the fourth quarter. Listening online, it's the little Fayard clan. They had a soccer <laughs> game tonight, one four to three. Congratulations to Carson. Maddox and Zoe also listening in. So in the past six quarters, the Indians have outscored the Vikings. 88 to three. Mm. Haven't 
done an official count, but the, the Vikings have 22 seniors that they'll be losing. And with the transfer rules as what they are, could stand to lose more than 22. Certainly not what we want to see. You want to see your your rivals compete. You want to beat them, but you want to. Yeah, you want, you want to be want to be competitive. It's good for everything. It absolutely is. Not real good. But Juwan Taylor at quarterback. Right up the middle. Shoulders. Shoulders close to a first down. Little guy, he's quick and strong. Zach Childers been playing all year. All right, here we go. In for the Indians, number 22, Ricky Smith. Smith also number 36, Xavier Kane. They'll split wide to the left. Getting their first snaps in varsity action. Kalen Lovett's a tailback, and he'll get the handoff. They move the pile. Love it down to the 23-yard line. Running clock here in the third quarter. Indians on top, 43 to nothing. Coach hasn't done anything except hand the ball off in the second half. That's the third play. I probably missed one, but... Robert, oh. Robert Ashley checks in, the sheriff's son. He'll come in at tight end. Number, where is number 17? Daniel Smith, seen a lot of him, he's in there. 22, Ricky Smith in as well. Kalen Lovett, left side, makes, makes a man miss, makes a spin move at the 10, down he goes. Well, if you're listening on radio, this is nothing fancy, just hand off dive plays. 4-11. 4.41, excuse me to play. It is running clock. Marquise Kane checks out. Brandon Lynch checks in. Zalus Alexander, 6'1", 175, 10th grader, checks in at wide receiver. Alexander will split wide left along with him as Brandon Lynch. Out of the eye. Childers keeps going. Childers fights his way down to the five-yard line. He's running it right up the A-gap. Fort Walton splits in a linebacker right at the A-gap. Xavier Kane comes in. Ricky Along Smith. with Ricky Smith. Ricky Smith, 6'3", 170-pound junior. DeAndre Hooks in there at right tackle. Getting Kalen Lovett some action. Might see him in the playoff run. Under center, toss sweep, right side to Levitt. Kalen Levitt puts the helmet down and scores a touchdown. 49. 49 to nothing. This will be the first time in the 45-year history that a 50 has shown up in the uh, score column. 45 is the highest, I believe. Last year. Mendoza in to attempt the point after with the clock sprinting away here in the third. Good snap. Placements up. Is the kick good? It looks good. It is good. Half a hundred, as Coach Spurrier would say, the old ball coach. About half a hundred on him. We'll keep it right here. Let's merge into our prognostications and predictions for the week. I've got us both at 0-0. Clean slate. Let's start fresh. Good. Ole Miss at Auburn. You like Ole Miss? They're at, Auburn's head coach is down here right now. He oh. doesn't have his mind on the game. I'm going with the upset. I'm going with the oh, Auburn. War Eagles. So I'll yeah. take Ole Miss. George in Florida, the cocktail party. And I got to go with Rick. I just like him too much. And I did too. That's who I picked in the paper. I just think that's just that they're going to win it. The, 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 mat, the matchup of directional schools in Louisiana, Louisiana want, Monroe and Louisiana Lafayette. You, you want, want, you like, you you like want Southern Lafayette Louisiana, or Korea? Ooh la la. I want ooh la la. Do you want the raging <laughs> cage on? So I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take Monroe. Wow. Yeah, like, yeah, nice guys up there in Monroe. Notre Dame and Temple. Temple. The Mac. The now I'm going to tell you why. Teams. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to pick Temple. Matt Rule, their head coach, was he played at Penn State while I was there. He was this long snapper, and uh, he's my age. I'm going to pull with the uh, guy that I know, Matt Rule. In Kentucky and Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee at Kentucky is the first 
Stoops, give me Stoops, bro. Bro Stoops. Fighting Stoops. <laughs> Bonner goes into the end zone with it, and he'll toss it over to the white hat. We'll have first and 10 from the 20 as this quarter races away. It is a minute 30 left in the third quarter, 50 to nothing. I do have one story. It was 1979, and I was a second grader at Edwin's Elementary. And back then, they used to have a pep rally at the elementary school. And it was well, all Fort Vikings. Walton. Yeah. All Fort Walton. I used to go to the library. I went with the Choctaw shirt on, and the librarian would give me the business. And I made sure that I was like, Choctaw, Choctaw, Choctaw. So I don't think Choctaw was expected to win, but they won 14 to nothing. And I was so excited. Oh, let the play go here. Geisel throws it under duress, gets it complete out in the flat. And close to a first down are the Vikings as we're under a minute to play here in this rapidly moving third quarter. So I was so excited to go to the library on Monday and, and get give her the business. And to my chagrin, she was sitting there decked out in chalk dog gear. <laughs> And Tommy just took it, my whole thing coming. away and she said, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> and man, did she take my <laughs> thunder away. And uh, I got to use that trick later on in life. I lost a bet. <laughs> and I'll tell this one after this play. Second down in a yard, Geisel split three receivers to the left. And we move this time. The, the, Engines move, and we'll move to the other end of the field after three quarters of play. The fourth quarter. So, fresh out of college, I was working in a fitness center. Would always wear my Penn State gear. And this guy, you know, I was working down here. And it was a year that Minnesota Golden Gophers were good. And they beat Penn State at home, and it was an upset. And uh, I knew the guy was coming. He had talked about the game, blah, blah, blah. So Monday rolls in, and I'm sitting there decked out in Minnesota gear. <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> shorts and shirt. And he walked in ready to give me the business and could not do anything because I'm sitting there in Minnesota gear. <laughs> and he's like, you just took the whole fun out of my whole <laughs> workout. <laughs> well, they're going to. They're not going to even have them swap into the field, it doesn't appear. And which puts a damper in the Fred Astaire field goal kicking contest. Somebody was going to get a chance to win a scholarship courtesy of Fred Astaire Dance Studio. and uh, Untimed down, we had a penalty on oh, us. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Untimed, so untimed, so they will. It's just going to be after this play. Geisel. Looking left, throwing left, incomplete. And that will do it for quarter number three. So that will do it for us as we go to the kicking contest for Fred Astaire at the end of three quarters of play. It's the Indians, 50. For Walton Beach Vikings, zero. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to the Big Green Radio Network. Second and 11 with a delayed draw, and that works well for Antonio Marshall. He goes out of bounds. Probably a, one of the best gains of the night for the Vikings. Determined not to get tackled. Give a shout out to the City League Gators, in particular Ben Harkins and the Viking Sam. Oh, yeah. Thor, we call him. <laughs> And a shout out to the coach's parents, Dave and Pat Thomas up in North Carolina. Coach, coach Thomas, your son, Coach Thomas, has done something that's never been done in this series, and that's hung half a hundred on the opponent. That's it. It feels better to be the hanger than the hangee, you know. Out in the flat, left flat, complete. Across midfield, and down he goes. The first seconds tick away, the first 30 here. So the Vikings cross midfield. 
So the Vikings next week at Leon. How about a long trip for that to end the season? How, uh, how Leon is this year. I'm not sure how good or bad they are. We ended at Mosley. Both teams on the road, and it'll be uh, empty here in the south part of the county. Evander Rose in here at corner. Number 14. On his horse, throws that one out in the open area with no one close by. We'll see if we can call some, some players. That normal, normally names don't get called. Sam Mason is hustling after the play. Charles Hooks, number 94, is in there. He's the, the future Indians. Michael Matthews in at linebacker. 6'3", 200, senior. Second down, 10 to go for the Vikings. Under 10 minutes to play, running clock. Complete, oh, hit hard. Knocked away by Evander Rose. <laughs> Jarring tackle for the senior. Corey Bonner had, had to wait for it. Ball floated out, he took a pop in the back and coughed it up. Vikings huddling it up. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to play here in their last game in Okaloosa County. Both teams be on the road next week. Pass complete in, dropped over the middle. Heard footsteps, I believe. I think you're correct. Joshua Rodriguez had it in his hands and just flat out dropped it. Great throw by Chase Giselle, Giselle. Jezel. <laughs> Geisel. Geisel. There you go. If I was listening, I would have <laughs> known that. So it's fourth down. Ten to go for the in, uh, for the Vikings. Excuse me. They're just a little bit east of our arrowhead at midfield. Geisel. Looking, looking, looking. Throws it incomplete. 31 to 3 up at Niceville. So the Niceville Eagles having their way. And we'll see who's coming in for the Indians. Robert Ashley, again, we called him earlier in a tight end. And here's one I've been waiting on a long time. Number 82, Evan Connor, the senior, started playing in ninth grade. Has never quit, never given it up. I believe this might be his first play. Wide receiver son of Tom and Tracy Connor. He splits wide left, looks at the official, and he says, yep, you're good. First and 10. Indians out of the eye. Delay and a spin move for a couple yards. That's Elijah Davis, the 10th grader. 5'6", 150. Dalen Boyd checking in. Back into the game, Brandon Lynch. Second down, nine to go for the Indians. Seven minutes, four seconds to play, leading 50 to nothing over the Vikings. Just trying to get this one over with nobody hurt. Dive play over right guard. Ball's out. Ball is out. Do the Vikings have it? They do. And the Vikings get the, their first turnover of the game. Juan Balancier. That was the baby Indian. <laughs> Balancier. His time out for hydration was six minutes and 36 seconds to play. Again, thanks to the Dowd Law Firm, Mike Webster's Law Firm, Brian and Kim Pennington, and Bruno Trilogy for those nice game day t-shirts the team got to wear today and this week. Made by Screen Print Designs for all your t-shirt needs. Look to screen, screen printing designs. And after the game, you're going to want to hang around for the presentation of the Mayor's Trophy by Rotary President Charles West from Fort Walton Beach Rotary Club. 
There's that true. What a special night. That's a, this is, I'm not sure the rules of engagement anymore, but this will make it three straight for the boys and uh, the boys with the black helmets on. Finally got one last year for the first time. At the rigs. What they affectionately call the <coughs> tin can. <coughs> but it is a nice stadium, field turf. Serve the Vikings well. You don't have to make that trip over yeah. here. Well, the Indians will live to play two more weeks. One on the schedule and one more added to it. We will go to Nice High School for a 7.30 Eastern kickoff. That'll be a week from Friday. I believe that's the 13th, huh? Yes, it is. Friday the 13th over at Nice High School. That's in Ponte Vedra. For Walton Earing, this one deep. Oh, if he'd have just stuck his hands out, I think Antonio Marshall would have had a chance to catch it. Get on the scoreboard. 50 to nothing here. The, it's been all engines all night. The, the fumble just minutes ago was the first ever tur first turnover tonight for the Indians. Have to hook up with boys basketball coach Andy Thickpin and also girls basketball coach Don Brown and talk about their respective seasons. I know high, high hopes for the Lady Indians again. This yeah. year, Nadia Fingal, the Stanford all-world commit to Stanford. Also, Brittany uh, Brown's sister, oh, incomplete. <laughs> and Chuck threw a penalty. flag. <laughs> Franzelia Our, came in late. The ref threw a flag. Let <laughs> yeah. me call him out. <laughs> We'll sort this one out, and that's going to be it on the first. Uh, they're going to call pass interference on the Indians. So the Vikings will get 15 yards, probably their biggest gain of the night. Down to the 32-yard, excuse me, 33 and a half. Coverage, he bumped him on the shoulder before they got, got there. Under five minutes to play. Chase Geisel, the senior, he's done it before. Again, he... Played some quarterback until they went with Uten later in the year. Out in the flat complete to Antonio Marshall for about five yards. Miles Betts on the tackle with the clinical form tackle. The, uh, a moral victory here for the Vikings to get on the board. I'm sure the Indians want to keep them out of the end zone. There is that pride factor of the defense wants to shut out. Wide left, Richard Parker. To the right, Corey Bonner. Second down, five to go. Launch this one toward the end zone. Three Indians and one Viking. That's not a good number. The Antonio Marshall, the guy comes up wobbly. Joey White with the pass breakup. I think Antonio Marshall wishes he'd have stuck his hands out to catch that other one. He wouldn't have had that one. He got the worst end of that. Did make an effort for that one. Three black shirts on top of him. So it's third down for the Vikings. Clock racing away. We'll be done with this one before you can blink an eye. Indians lead 50 to nothing. Geisel looking, looking, looking over the middle, and the Indians almost intercepted. The only thing that kept them from is they ran into each, each other. other. Cole Cruz and Joey White, slow to get up. They both were going for that football and collided. Wanted the, yeah, they wanted <laughs> the it. INT, yeah. which would have been the count, probably have been the fourth or fifth. Three minutes under three to play now. That would have been the fourth interception of the night. Fourth down. The chain gang's wearing those nice t-shirts. We're going to see if we can scarf a few of those. <laughs> I'm sure we can at the Spirit Shack. Yeah. Fourth down, Geisel. Looking, 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 looking. Launches. Complete! Down to the three-yard line. Good catch, good throw. Geisel's excited. Hit favorite target, Antonio Marshall. 
This Viking team was the same team that put up 40 last week against Bay. And Joshua Rodriguez can't get his shoe fixed. I think he's got it now. First and goal. They'll go with a tight formation. Fighting toward the goal line. Did he make it? Not yet. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Big Green Radio Network. One second and goal, Vikings. Oh, goal line stand. He keeps pushing. He keeps pushing. Does he get in? There's the signal. Touchdown, Vikings. Hooray for the guys in white. Student section is still over there. Again. Yeah. Hasn't they left. get it in. They got the big American flag going, and it's 50 to 6. Now the Vikings going to go for two. Go for two, and if they get it, we'll onside kick. It will tie the greatest margin of victory for the Indians. 43 points last year. And they're going to take a timeout to talk about it. 55 seconds. <laughs> the extra points. Yo. <laughs> Got something to, to think about. New offensive line this week with Jimmy Grace, Kevin Klein, Mark Pennington, Jason Godfrey, DeAndre Hooks, and you saw a little bit of Kalen Lovett at tailback. Yeah, that was a surprise of the night. Marquise Kane moving to some fullback. And Colby Dorsey doing his thing at tight end. Getting in the huddle. Getting yeah. on the clock. Yeah, so we'll see where uh, where it goes. Again, the uh, Indians on the road next week to Mosley, but not before they pick up the uh, the trophy here. Just hand it out to the winner. It's been in the Choctahatchee trophy case for the last two seasons. So we'll see if it has one more. Just a matter of where they're going to put it. 55 seconds left. Going to the left hash. The trophy, where they're going to put the trophy. Yeah. Right back in the case. I tell you, he worked so hard, I'd put it in Dean Snape's office for a little while. <laughs> let him in there when he... And the Dean of Discipline let him handle it. Vikings need one more player. They get him in. Come out for Split him wide left. 55 seconds, and he moved. It took him forever to get in the game, and he moved. I mean, he just had so a timeout, the, and then they show up on the field with 10. Yeah. Fellas oh well. are disengaged. Yeah. Can't blame them. Well, it's been a great season here at home. Next, next season, looking forward to it as well, as we'll have the traditional rivals, Niceville, Crestview at home next year, along with some others. Geisel looking, looking, looking. Now he's going to run for his life to the right. Will we keep him out? No, he gets in. So it's 50 to 7. Which 50 to 8. 50 to 8, excuse me, which actually ties that record. Of 42 that, points. I think that's why they went. 50 to 8. That. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Johnson knew in the back of his mind that he could tie the record. <laughs> he would. Don't have the Yeah, so we'll, we'll have to find some new room on this spreadsheet for co-defeats co by the Vikings. But in all, we, we want them to do well, and that's going to do it. Coach Greg Thomas heads the line, and he's going to walk over and give his best to Coach Tommy Johnson and the Vikings. Here comes Coach Johnson. He's smiling. He's a gentleman. Along with some others out there, Coach Matt Coffey. What a what a career he had at Fort Walton Beach. Matt Coffey. You know, as hard as these guys play against each other and quote hate each other after this game, it's all fun. They they like each other. Yeah, this was a. Uh 
well played ball game. I mean, as far as both teams having class and trying as hard as they can, and uh, it's a shame that it was so one sided tonight. Hopefully, we wish we do wish the Vikings the best and hope that they can get it turned around and get things back to the way that, that they've had. The way it in should the past. be. The way it should yep. be. Yep. Yep. You're right. Well, again, the Indians win this one big. Vikings will have one more week. They'll play at Leon next week. The Indians on the road at Panama City at, at Mosley High School out of Lynn Haven. Actually, it's a game is at Tommy Oliver Stadium. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. Tune in at 640 for pregame. We'll do it then. So for until next week, for Scotty Griffith back at the studio and Lionel Fayard here at the stadium, we're saying good night from number 45 in the series, the game number 45, Choctahatchee 50. Fort Walton Beach Vikings 8. So long, everybody.